Hello, Internet. This is Chris Klein with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. And we are here today to talk about Yamaha's new performance synthesizer, the MOD X8 or the Mod X8, uh, whatever you prefer. This is a great keyboard, 88 weighted keys, tons of sound, sampled waveforms, as well as an 8 operator FM synth uh, sequencer, uh, the big knob. This thing is so cool. It's pretty light for a weighted keyboard. It is really inspiring right out of the box. Uh, lots of inputs and outputs, standard 5-pin MIDI input and output, as well as MIDI over USB and USB to host, so you can save performances and other information to a flash drive. They thought of pretty much everything with this keyboard. It is tons of fun. It sounds great, super flexible. Uh, really, really excited about this. It also comes in a 61 key version and a 76 key version if you don't need all of this real estate or maybe you already have a master controller that already has 88 keys that are weighted and whatnot. You don't need to spend the extra money for this really, really beautiful key bed, which is really, really great. I should mention again, it feels really, really nice to play it. So we're gonna go over some of the, the features on this keyboard. But we can't get too in-depth because it is really feature-rich. Uh, there's a lot you can do with manipulating effects, uh, the operators of the FM synthesis engine that exist in here, uh, manipulating the uh, waveforms as well, creating performances, sequence, all kinds of stuff. We can't get into every single thing, but we are going to go over the basic layout, uh, explore the touch screen a little bit, and uh, hear a few sounds as well. So um, stick around for a bit, and let's explore the MOD X8. Thank you for joining us on this International Taco Tuesday. All right, so here you can see all the controls, the layout of the MOD X8 or the Mod X8 from Yamaha. As you can see, everything is spaced out really, really nicely. Uh, the silk screen lettering words on the, on the um, controls are really, really nice, nice and big. Uh, everything is very easy to find and read. You've got your alpha wheel here, uh, the big knob for multi-effects, uh, faders, other uh, potentiometers or knobs for other uh, parameters. Let's go all the way down to the left hand side of the keyboard and here you will see we have our pitch bend as well as our modulation and you can hear it modulating a little bit on this patch, not a whole lot. Um, and then as we move down we start getting into uh, more functions. Uh, we have various assign keys, we have the arpeggiator on and off, uh, motion sequence, a hold, so if you actually have a motion sequence happening, you can click on that and it will freeze the motion sequence. Um, motion sequence trigger, uh, you have your uh, transposition keys, uh, you can move uh, up octaves, uh, up or down. As we move down to the, to the right of our pitch bend and modulation and some of these other functions, we come to input and uh, output gain stages. Uh, we have our master volume. We have this USB volume, which is our USB to host. Uh, so if we had a flash drive or something in there and there were wave, a waveform data on there, this would uh, control that. And then we also have a gain knob for our microphone and or line input, which is a stereo line input. So now we move over to uh, these controls over here. We have these four different potentiometers that can control various aspects of the sound, cutoff, resonance, attack, decay. Uh, EQ, ARP time, so on, and so, or ARP gate time, and so on and so forth. I have a, an FM bass patch uh, on here right now. Right, pretty standard. You know, we I think we all are familiar with a sound like that. And let's explore the big knob real fast. So as I turn the big knob up. And down, you will hear that it manipulates uh, different aspects of the patch. And what it sounds like it's actually doing to me in this instance, we're not going to dive into it, is that it's manipulating the FM operators that exist. And there's eight that you can manipulate. Uh, but let's go back up here really, really quickly, and we'll talk about this. So I want you to hear the filter. So there we're just messing with the cutoff, but let's turn the resonance up and let's see if this thing can really scream for us. That's pretty cool. You can get some really, really cool bass things happening with that. Right? 
pretty, pretty decent uh, filter there. But let's move down to here. This is where it gets a little more interesting because once again, it's an eight operator FM synth and you can't really go in and tweak the patches too much. However, with these four sliders, you can come in and you can manipulate the different operators or the levels of the operators. So let's take a listen real fast. I'm gonna go ahead and manipulate operators one through four. So with operator one, you can really hear more of the, the, the low end content being manipulated or being turned up and down with two. You get a little more of the, the low mids that are being manipulated. When we come to three, that's a pretty cool operator that we're manipula manipulating there because you're hearing more noise in it. More, there's more white noise happening in that. Right, it's affecting the resonance. And number four is doing the same thing. Right? So let's see what happens when we go down to operators five through eight. Oh, that's cool. So what we're getting there is like some sync that's happening. It's very, very FM sounding. We start getting into like John Carpenter territory there, which is really, really nice. So again, you can't go in and really manipulate the operators any more than that. So you have a patch, then you can bring the different operators up and down and you can manipulate the timbres of that particular patch uh, just that much, at least as far as we can tell so far. We do have this touch screen, which will allow us to access pretty much every parameter of the keyboard. Um, any interaction that you need to make is basically gonna happen here after you hit uh, one of these hard keys. Uh, right now, we're looking at all the different live sets, the performances that exist. So I can click on like FM Chill Out, for instance, and we've changed our patch. The patch has been changed, or the performance patch has been changed. And so from here, we can see all the different performances or patches that exist. Whenever we pull up one of these patches, it's gonna tell us what's actually being used. So for this, the warm shivers, it's only using the FM engine on here. It's not using the um, sample engine that exists or the advanced wave memory two engine that's on here. But each one is actually gonna tell you what is going to be employed. Each patch is gonna tell you what's going to be employed. If you just look, you've got the FM, uh, and it, it motion control and other information is actually associated with the patch. Right now, the certain page, the, the, excuse me, the, the presets that we're on or the page are only FM presets. We can jump around from different pages by hitting the up and down arrows. So now we have a page called motion synthesizers. And that's a new discovery. It gets glitched out whenever you use the modulation. That's pretty cool. Let's hear it again. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. Lots of fun there. So it gives us a lot of information. Click on the home screen and we're actually going to see a mixer. And 
as I move this fader right here, I can manipulate different parts. Pretty cool. And then we have all these other parameters that we can access, motion control, uh, which as you can see here, that's showing us how we're actually assigning different keys and different controllers to other parameters that exist on here. Uh, but we're not gonna dive too much more into that because it will be here all day. It's really, really slick though. Uh, we have this mixing page, uh, scenes that are associated with different performances or patches. And then we also have uh, our sequencer, which is really, really nice. You can sequence up to 16 different parts. It's a 16 part multi-timbral synthesizer. And with all these different parts that you sequence across MIDI channels one through 16, you can actually assign motion control and you can, you can, contr you can control different parameters with the sequencer as well, which is really, really cool. We could also go to our system and here you can see all the different, uh, or excuse me, our utility page, which shows you uh, various global settings on here. It's just a really, really easy keyboard to get around on. Tons of fun. Um, really excited about this.
The MODX8 also has a bunch of rhythm patterns that you can use. Again, this is a performance synthesizer. Um, so in conjunction with the arpeggiator, well, you might be able to do something like, um, and I don't mean to offend or lessen anything, but you could write a country song really, really quickly. So let's go ahead and do the real drums kit, and I'm just gonna press a key. We've got a hit song, right? It's that easy. Let's hear what the uh, chicken picking Telecaster sounds like with the trap kit. This should be fun. something that's altogether new. It might be an abomination to some. Some people might really like it though. Maybe here in Texas, trap drums and country guitar. Let's do it. So there are a lot of different rhythms on here. We can page down and down and we've got, gosh, there's so much happening here. 8Z destruct, what's that? That sounds cool. <laughs> That's like something from the Terminator with, again, country guitar. That's kind of rad. Uh, there's so much happening here. Uh, would love to get into every single rhythm and drum set that's on here, but we just can't do that. You need to come and see us in San Antonio and play with this thing, and then you can hear all the wonderful things it can do. And of course, we also had the arpeggiator turned on with the exploding drums. Wow, we changed the feel real fast there, didn't we? And we're creating all kinds of new genres of music just from pressing single keys, listening to the drum kits, and having the arpeggiator turned on. How about it? Let's do this. Merry Christmas, everybody. And then as we move over here to the, uh, further down to the right, we have our alpha wheel, which is gonna control uh, various parameters, primarily dealing with uh, numbers, letters, entering in different performances and whatnot. If you have a new performance that you wanna call uh, destructive country, you could use it right, you could use the alpha wheel to change letters and numbers and so on and so forth. Uh, this will also allow you to move around if you have a lot of different uh, spots within a window. You can move the cursor around, as you can see, uh, I'm doing that right now. Um, and then we have our exit, enter, tap tempo. And then as we move over here, we start dealing with, we have our live set. Uh, we can look at different categories of information, which is pretty nice. Uh, performance home, uh, at, it's actually called Texas Chicken Pick. How about that? Uh, our utility, which allows us to look at uh, more global settings and uh, store shift and so on and so forth. It's really well laid out. As you can see, once again, um, all of the silkscreen letters and numbers are really, really nice and big. It's just not really, really cluttered. It's really, really easy to get around on. Uh, now, diving deeper into the parameters, that's another thing, but when you wanna get into those parameters, it's easy to manipulate them. Everything feels really good. The buttons are, are really, really sturdy. The faders have just enough give to them. They're really, really uh, nice feeling as well as the potentiometers that exist here. The big knob, of course, feels really good. Everything just feels really, really nice. It's a really, really great build, great construction, and we're really uh, proud to have it here in the store. So thanks for joining me on this uh, brief uh, adventure with the Mod X8 or the MOD X8 from Yamaha. Um, 
Hope you like what you've heard, uh, what you've seen. Again, we weren't able to dive into everything, unfortunately, because it's, there's just too much. We could spend hours uh, manipulating sounds, effects, assigning effects to all the different motion controls that exist on here and, and all the other different parameters that can be automated and recorded. It's really, really cool once again. Um, <clears throat> but if you liked what you saw, uh, remember it also comes in a 61 key version and a 76 key version, which is uh, cheaper than this because you're not paying for this beautiful key bed once again. Um, it is available on our website, and if you want to find out more, please go to uh, www.almamusic.com. You can see it here on YouTube, and you can give us a call as well. One of us would be more than happy to talk about it with you over the phone or shoot us an email, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, be sure to download the keyboard buyer's guide or the piano buyer's guide that we have attached to this video down in the comments. That might help you out on your mission uh, for just buying a piano or any keyboard for that matter. And um, I guess with that being said, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed with us yet, we're going to have more videos with guitars, keyboards, pro audio, accordions, you name it. Uh, we are a full service music store. And uh, I guess I'll close out with saying uh, play a note. It may change your life. And uh, have a great weekend.